just beautiful. I would yeah. be out here every day if I worked in a building here yeah. nearby. We're at the urban wetland at the Perth Cultural Centre, which is a piece of civic space uh, perched between uh, Perth's major cultural institutions, the Art Gallery of WA, the State Theatre, the West Australian Museum and the Library. Uh, and one of the key features of the Perth Cultural Centre civic space is this wetland. And it started off um, prior to the rejuvenation works that happened through here in 2009-2010 it was a classic 1960s brutalist water feature uh, that was shallow, exposed to sun, had high energy pump and fountain that was noisy, uh, had persistent water quality problems with algal blooms, it was chlorinated. Uh, and uh, when we um, were working with the Metropolitan Redevelopment Authority to do the activation works and renewal works through here, we identified this as an opportunity to convert it into a freshwater ecology based urban wetland. Uh, and the idea really was to provide an opportunity for reintroducing the types of plants and animals that were once common through this part of Perth before it was drained and became the city. And of course the idea was to work within the existing form, uh, the existing you know, concrete uh, formwork. Just keeping in mind this is perched on top of uh, art gallery storage. So that presented some, some challenges, but essentially the response was to look at putting in a bifiltration system that draws water from the water column down into the gravel and sand substrate, which then drains down into a low-lying point uh, of the water feature, uh, and then it brings it up and spills it over that wall behind us. And what that does is constantly draw well aerated water down into that media to allow uh, microbes to do the work of uh, consuming nutrients and making those nutrients into plant available forms for all this vegetation to thrive which from time to time gets harvested and taken out of the system um, and uh, the so I guess the micro grading was really important uh, we only had about 500 mil of profile to work with uh, and so considering there's about 250 mil of that media that I mentioned uh, the remaining uh, profile was about sculpting in such a way where we provided a range of niches for plants that like uh, the dry atop of the moundings through to the, the types of plants that like that interface between the water and damp soil. The other thing is, is that we really wanted to have quite a still water feature. The wetlands that normally occur uh, through Perth are expressions of the water table and they're not, they're not moving water, they're not like streams or creeks. So it's designed in such a way where there is a small amount of water movement which is facilitated through uh, an aeration system and that's to ensure we don't get sort of stagnant parts and the idea is that it's the right environment for local invertebrates and then also other fauna like fish and frogs to build up and, and to thrive in this space. I know you've been monitoring the progress over, over time, what's happened with the flora and fauna? Yeah. So. Uh, the wetland has, has established very well. You can see the plantings have been very successful. These were all put in as tube stock, so only quite small plants, and they've colonised very well. We followed that up with a series of fauna uh, introduction uh, events, and that included some invertebrates, but also focused on things like the local freshwater pygmy perch, uh, several species of tadpole, which would then become frogs, obviously, as well as glass shrimp and uh, mollusks like freshwater mussels. Uh, and what we've seen is their recruitment has been very good. Uh, their numbers have built up. We've also seen the arrival of a number of other freshwater invertebrates that have come here on their own accord, uh, many of which have a, a flight uh, component of their life cycle and have their nymph or larval stage in the water. Uh, and so um, the water quality monitoring and the uh, fauna uh, sampling has demonstrated the water quality is in, in really good shape. And we've had wonderful response from, from the public. It was interesting, when this idea was first uh, mooted and put forward, uh, we you know, had a few raised eyebrows, both from some of the institutions around us. Um, you know, there was a, a thought that perhaps uh, this wasn't going to work and it would become a mosquito-ridden you know, sort of uh, cesspool. And there were even some other urban designers at that point uh, who were making commentary uh, on the radio and in the media because it's a very high-profile spot. Uh, and that, that commentary was, you know, not always that encouraging, saying, you know, is there really a place for, you know, this kind of wetland nature activity in the middle of the city? You know, they were sort of locked into its, its I guess, its historical brutalist design. And, but places have to evolve. Anyway, once it went in and settled in, the feedback was amazing. Uh, and from a space that was rarely used because it didn't look good and the water fountain that was here was noisy and, and, and didn't encourage people to come and sort of use the space, 
Uh, now um, you see kids and adults coming and it's all been designed so you can step into the area on these little stepping duck boards and, and pontoons to encourage people getting closer to the water and seeing what's going on. Uh, and of course the main function of the space, which is a, an amphitheatre with the stage and, and the seating, uh, is still very much in place. So there are concerts and, and performances here and they are really well received. So it's a great example of where a bit of inner urban biophilia uh, and civic space can go uh, hand in hand. Can't quite imagine watching a concert from here with this, yeah. with the wetland in, in the foreground like this. What is it like? Is it does it add a, a special look, dimension? Look, 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 it does. Like? And and see behind us here with the art gallery walls, they do big light shows onto that. So ah. there's been some great events where there's performances happening on stage. Uh, three or four hundred people are packed out around this amphitheater. Lights in the background, uh, and it's really quite magical. You know, looking over this wonderful. Uh, sort of water area here. In fact, a lot of the thought in the plant selection, particularly in this middle area, about keeping the plant profiles low, mm -hmm. uh, so we're not obstructing the views to the, the main stage area. Yeah. Would you uh, imagine this could be done in other parts of the city, um, in or near, or on top of other buildings? And would, would you recommend that other cities do this? Look, absolutely. I mean, there, there are a couple of key benefits from doing this. Um, firstly, uh, we converted what was a very unattractive uh, high energy and expensive to maintain water feature into something that is lower energy, lower maintenance cost. And so, so just in terms of asset management, uh, it's a step forward. Um, add to that the fact that there's you know, tremendous biophilic uh, benefits uh, for people to come and get to see a bit of thriving nature in the middle of the city. There's the local urban ecology benefits, but also there's uh, urban stormwater benefits too. So this area being a low point in the landscape receives significant runoff from the surrounding paving. Uh, also run off from some of the, the neighbouring buildings' roofs. And because we're in the middle of the city here, you know, that brings with it urban pollution, hydrocarbons and, and, and dust and, uh, and, and nutrients too. Uh, and this acts like a set of kidneys, if you like, treating that water uh, before the overflow joins what is a main drain that runs under the city down into the, into the Swan River. So I think these small constructed wetlands, if they're designed well, uh, they can fulfil uh, a number of purposes in our urban environments and I think this one's an absolute cracker. The interest has been enormous yeah. and it's appeared on TV and in loads of magazine articles and events and what have you. Loads of tours with councils and, and state agencies but we've never seen it repeated elsewhere to no. the same level and it's seven or eight years ago. Yeah. 